The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered was only announced in November of 2023, but it's set to release on January 19, 2024. Not only are we getting The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, but we're also getting some extra features. Along with the updated graphics, The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered's graphics will be in a native 4K output in fidelity mode, 1440p upscale to 4K in performance mode, and an unlock frame rate option for TVs to support VRR, increased texture resolution, increased level of detail distance, improved shadow quality, animation sampling rate, and more. This will all make the game look and run beautifully as long as your TV can support it, but if you have bought a PS5, your TV most likely can. What intrigued me the most was this new mode, No Return a roguelike survival mode that lets players have randomized encounters and experience the brutality of The Last of Us Part II's combat like never before. Thanks to PlayStation Canada, I got a chance to play it before launch. Typically, these roguelike modes aren't my cup of tea, but after playing God of War Ragnarok Valhalla, I was excited about it. I haven't had enough time to replay the story of The Last of Us Part II Remastered, but in this review, I will focus on no return mode and whether it makes The Last of Us Part II Remastered a must buy. I will be doing a full review of all the other new features, like how the game feels compared to the PS4 version and the other additions like guitar free play mode and updated graphics, fast load times, and behind the scenes of the making of The Last of Us Part 2. That review will come later, as I don't want to rush it, and if you played The Last of Us Part 2 before, you know it's a long, but it's awesome. I want to focus on no return in this review, and the spoiler alert if you haven't played The Last of Us Part 2 before, all the characters I mentioned you meet during The Last of Us Part 2. I almost feel like The Last of Us was meant to have a roguelike mode. Many games have tried one of these modes. Most of the time, I'm not a fan. Far Cry 6 was a recent example of when I felt it failed and made no sense for the game. It worked in the current God of War Ragnarok Valhalla, and I'm happy to say it does with The Last of Us Part 2. In No Return, you fight through a series of randomized combat scenarios on your way to showdown with a boss to finish the run. Like many roguelikes, your death is permanent, and any acquired weapons or upgrades are reset if you die. No run will feel the same as the map is randomized each time. You can do different types of runs, but not all are available from the start, as you will need to unlock them by completing challenges. Standard runs are all available from the first attempt, but custom and daily runs will be unlocked as you progress. With custom runs, you can customize the rules and adjust the game modes within No Return, along with the enemies, mods, gambits, and dead drops. With daily run, you compete against your friends and other players in the game on a run that is only available that day. You can all try to see who can get the highest score as you rank against everyone who's tried it. When starting a run, you will be asked to choose a difficulty setting which ranges from very light to grounded, with seven difficulty settings altogether, including custom settings. Each difficulty setting gives you a score. For example, if you played your run on moderate difficulty, you would have a score multiplier of 1.5 and Grounded gives you a score multiplier of 2.5. The score you get each round decides the amount of resources you receive at the, that location. Each run, you will see parts, pills, and coins to upgrade your character, purchase weapons, and upgrade those weapons. You will be then met with the character selection screen, and when you first boot up the game, you will only have access to Ellie and Abby. Once you complete specific challenges, you can unlock the remaining characters, Dina, Jesse, Tommy, Joel, Lev, Yara, Mel, and Manny. Each character has their inventory they start with, a playstyle, and traits, so choose the best that suits your playstyle. After playing all these characters, I prefer to either use Lev or Manny. I would say that I liked using Joel and Ellie as well, but I'm guessing it had a lot to do with the familiarity of their combat styles from the games. The combat feels exactly like it did in the main game and can be brutal and violent. Manny is extremely powerful, but as with every character, he does have a weakness, and his is that he doesn't have a health kit breath. So the only way to get them is by finding them in the level and not crafting them in combat. He starts with two powerful weapons, more health and more parts. You can even craft ammo with Manny, so not having health kits isn't that bad. When you complete specific challenges in the game, you can unlock skins for your character which are permanently unlocked. Other things like characters, enemies, and mods become permanently unlocked from completing challenges. Once you select your character, you will be in the hideout, where, after you finish locations, you will be able to purchase upgrades and weapons. You will see a workbench, a planning board, a training post, and some supply cache. The planning board you will use to select your encounter, which also shows which combat mode the encounter is in, enemy factions, score multiplier, mods, and rewards. The mods can be good and bad, so pay close attention to them when you make your selection. You will have to decide which path to take to get to the final boss. But 
only have a good idea of one in front of you and not the other ones after. I found fighting infected the most challenging, so take that advice in any way you want when you're deciding your path. The mods help you determine your rewards, as the ones that hurt you will also earn you more rewards. The game opens up as you play more runs and unlock more characters, mods, and combat modes. The combat modes offer you the most variety as they can make things difficult for you and not allow you to get used to one mode during the run. I would suggest doing the challenges to unlock these modes first and as quickly as possible because they also offer more rewards depending on which mode you get. The modes are Assault, Hunted, and Capture. Assault has a group of enemies you need to defeat, coming in waves. After each wave, you'll have some downtime that will allow you to resupply, heal, and craft. In Hunted, you will be met with continuous enemy reinforcements that you must defeat or run away from before the time runs out. I felt this was with one way easier mode as it doesn't last as long as the others. But if you're going up against the infected, you can die very quickly as they swarm you. That brings us to my favorite mode, which is capture. It's my favorite because you get the most resources from upgrading by completing it. In capture, the enemy's guard is safe, filled with supplies you need to open before the time runs out. You can either kill the enemies or go in stealth and open up before anybody sees you. You will also earn a trophy if you open this up before anybody sees you. I know I've mentioned Gambit, Mods, and Dead Drops, but I'll explain them now. Gambits are separate challenges that appear during the encounters, but only once. You will earn extra rewards like currency, ammo, and health by completing these. Mods add rules and mechanics that change how you play the encounter. One mod is a photo filter, which will change your encounter how it looks while you play to a filter from photo mode. Dead drops are mailboxes that you'll be marked on the screen. Listen mode lets you see where they are during your encounter. It will ask you for an item to donate. If you have that item to donate, you can earn a special reward in the hideout after the encounter. During your encounters, you might even get a companion joining you in the fight to make it a bit easier for you. But I found the AI in these may need a little tweaking as they got in the way or did nothing more times than helping. At least I found that with some characters, but when you use Lev or Yara, your companion helps you a lot more. You're offered upgrades to make your companion more powerful after each run. The combat is as brutal as ever when it comes to dying. Be prepared to die as it happens far too often, but I can assure you, you will learn from your mistakes. The death scenes when you die are pretty gory. Some mods show killing in slow motion, so when you use the shotgun to kill an enemy, they explode. If you have a sensitive stomach, this game isn't for you. The control layout is the same as The Last of Us Part 2 with no major changes. All the weapons from the game are in this mode, and you'll get to use them as you finish encounters, like the flamethrower, crossbow, shotgun, bolt action rifle, and semi-auto rifle, along with a couple handguns. You can re-roll, but it will cost you more coins if you don't see any weapons you want to purchase at the trading post after the encounter. I would recommend wearing headphones as it not only adds to the immersion, but helps you know where the enemies are when not using the listening function. The DualSense haptics help to add to the immersion and are a welcome function that wasn't in the previous version of The Last of Us Part 2. Do I think No Return brings something different that you should buy The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered? No. I don't, but I think this mode offers the game much more fun and replayability. I don't think it was supposed to sell you the game either way, but I think this is the mode the developers wanted from the start. It's only a $10 upgrade if you previously purchased the digital or still have a physical copy of The Last of Us Part 2, and this mode is well worth that $10 upgrade. Naughty Dog has taken the world they have built, giving you another way to enjoy it. If this is the new trend in the addition to first party PlayStation games and adding modes that make sense, sign me up because I can't wait to see what they'll add next. If I had to give No Return a score, I would say it's an 8 out of 10 because it leaves you wanting more and doesn't overstay its welcome. If this is an example of what The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered will be like, we're in for a great remastered video game. This has been Court from Three Dads in a Console, and this has been my review of No Return.